Well, a good blessed evening to all of you, and I hope you're having a wonderful day out there today. Whoa, do we have a lot of stuff to cover tonight. Woohoo! There are some exciting things happening in the world, and I'm just happy to be here to share them with you. Welcome to Sunday Night Live, Makayo Ministries. Man, we're talking about the late, great, what is the fate of Kate? We don't know, but we're going to look into it tonight. There's a lot of fishy things going on. Uh, something may be rotten in Denmark. Um, we've, got, we've got old videos that are popping up and uh, rings missing from hands and all kinds of uh, interesting things. Um, so we'll, we'll be taking a look uh, at that. And uh, also, uh, in addition to Kate, uh, might she have a, a connection with Purim? And Esther, is there some sort of connection going on there? As we know, Purim starts this weekend. We're actually in the, in the midst of it beginning and um could there be some connection going on there uh and there's also a lunar eclipse happening this weekend actually tonight uh if you stay up late here in the eastern coast it's around a little after midnight um so this is coming just just a couple of weeks before the big one that we're all been waiting for so uh, what might the connection be here and does it go all the way back to the, the year 1811 Woo. I mean, this is going to cover almost 90% of the sky, this uh, lunar eclipse that's happening as well. So uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Also, we've got some major geomagnetic activity happening that could, could make a lot of crazy things happen, including perhaps northern lights uh, happening in the southern U.S. Southern U.S. for northern lights? What? And then we've got, of course, the solar eclipse, the National of the Guard. Uh, it seems to be coming out in every state lately. Might talk a little bit about that. We've also got uh, a sunrise time that seems very peculiar for the date of the eclipse in Israel. Uh, something to consider. And then they talked about it 54 years ago in a newspaper in 1970 uh, regarding this eclipse. Um, is there any significance to that? New Madrid had some earthquakes in the same area in 1811 with some very strange happenings that we can discuss. And might we be looking forward to some of those same things happening this time around due to the Devil Comet that also appeared at the time in 1811 and appears every 71 years. Hmm, something to consider there. And... Uh, is it the, are we finally going to have the black swan event? Not that we're looking forward to that, but it uh, could be black for some and white for others. Um, may, may be a dark event for some and a time of hope for others. And what does this album called The Black Swan with a big number seven have to do with that? Also, is there only one place in America named Rapture? And is that the only one that's going to be under the eclipse uh, coming up here? Wow, that's maybe significant. So we're looking at the calendar, of course, with uh, Purim happening, and we've got the Red Heifer weekend as well. Um, are they going to sacrifice the Red Heifer here on Red Heifer Sabbath? Um, Bill of the Gates of the Hell uh, <laughs> is already working hard to get 50 nations to take the digital ID. Will your nation be next, and are you already on the list? We might talk about this as well. Uh Oh, the benefits of digital ID they want to share with you. Great. That sounds real great. And then are, are there uh, reptilians already among us? Uh, this, this legitimate news article on Fox is telling you that you might start seeing them. Okay? You might start seeing uh, some strange creatures, but it's, it's not their fault. It's your fault somehow. So we'll talk a little bit about that as well. And uh, some strange lights in the sky in California. Uh, angels is what they say on the uh, video, so we might take a look at that also. The cult of Baal and the Kabbalah, what's the connection there? Wow, I mean, it, there's just so much, guys, so much to cover. We'll see if we get to all of this tonight. We might push some of it to next week. I mean, there's so many amazing things were shared with me. I appreciate everybody sharing stuff with me. Um, man, we've got uh, crazy uh, parking lots of being filling up with a bunch of moving vans uh, just all overnight. We don't know what that's all about, but we might explore that a little bit. That's happening here in Sunrise, Florida. And uh, is Mr. O still claiming to be uh, president? Is that is that what's going on here? I don't know. We'll take a look. Is it all in the names of his daughters? We'll take a look at that as well. 
And uh, what was this band doing playing the night that Moss of the Cow was attacked? Should we consider the connection there? Uh, Bond, James Bond, or is it May of the Son, free May of the Son? We're going to take a look at this a little bit deeper as well. <laughs> Like I say, lots of stuff, guys. Two Balkane in the Bible is connected to this. And uh, wow, 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 wow. And then, of course, free to the mate of the songs, uh, the Two Balkane. Two Balkane. So we'll be taking a look at that also. And uh, if you could mute your mics uh, while we're, uh, while we're you're not speaking, that would be awesome. And uh, and then we've got... Uh, we've got. just wanted to interrupt it ask you to share your screen sorry i will i will in just a second um okay. and then i'm still doing my opening here this is just the opening guys this is what i'm saying i got so much stuff um and then tubal cain was he the first to uh to do uh polygamy in the bible okay what, what might that what implications does that have is this guy connected somehow also and uh the Jesus said, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Was there a deeper meaning to that when we talk about Satanism? Something to consider. And then uh, uh, ex-Satanist explains how to fight Satanists. Also, we're going to look at dates. Wow, amazing eclipse connected dates with uh, some things that happened right in the middle. And on and on and on. Nickelodeon's in the news uh, right now with their documentary. And then uh, we might consider our Michael Jackson escapade of album covers if we get the time but uh any guys we case, have guys, a lot of stuff to cover tonight uh, <laughs> I'm, i appreciate you guys being with us tonight please do hit that like button guys please hit that subscribe button please subscribe we, we really need you to subscribe because they like to remove you when you're not looking so please subscribe share with your friends hit that subscribe button again and again if you've already subscribed subscribe one more time and also subscribe to our newly branded 100 percent bible uh, Mikhail ministries channel if you haven't already uh, we're looking to hit 1,000 subscribers. We're almost at 500 here. So if you can help take us to 1,000, that would be awesome. And uh, and then join us here in the fellowship. Have you ever been to the fellowship at MikhailMinistries.com? Uh, well, come on over. Now's the time because you can join the discussion tonight. There's people already here waiting to talk and share. And so we're excited to have everybody here tonight. How's everybody doing? Amazing. Woohoo! Man, that's what we like to hear. Okay, amazing. Any any other uh, you know glittering generalities? Everybody's feeling today. Full of, full of joy. What's that? Full of joy. Full of joy. Woohoo! Fruits of the spirit. We like those. Okay, very nice. Very nice. Well, okay. Well, guys, where do we want to unpack first? Because man, there's just so much happening. I mean, you know, we could literally go all night with this, but uh, we know people have to get to bed so they can get up the next day and whoo man there's a lot to share so what's on your mind guys i've actually seen a reptilians twice before really and it wasn't a chupa copper i saw really so chupa of the copper scary. okay let me let me share my screen with you guys sorry i forgot to do that Woo-hoo. okay go ahead yes tell me some more tell no me. i'm just saying uh, uh i had and I wasn't on drugs at the time. I, at that time, I had quit by then. Um, oh, okay, and that's good. Two, I've, seen, two, I've seen two people turn into complete reptiles, and it was it was frightening. So it's not going to be yeah, a happy experience. I, you know, when you hear these stories, you're kind of like, okay, seriously, reptilians? I mean, but okay, but check out this news, news uh, flash here. So what they're saying is... Now, this is on Fox News, guys, okay? This is not just uh, some onion or some, you know, silly, uh, oh, yeah. whatever, goofy goofy news. This is, uh, this, is, this is on Fox News, and they're claiming that people may start seeing. It's, it's a, newly, a newly defined... Yeah, uh, PMO. It's called PMO. Some see parts of other people's faces distorted in shape, texture, position, or color. Okay, so it's called, they're calling it PMO. Where you, where, you know, it's a new disease, right? They just I keep popping heard about up. that. They, they just keep popping up, these new diseases, right? So PMO, where you suddenly might see another person's face and they might look like a creature. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense, right? You just have a, you have a strange disease that makes you see other creatures. Boy, it kind of reminds me of that movie, They of the L-I-V-E. Uh, they live where the guy had the sunglasses and he could see the reptilians with his special sunglasses or special sunglasses that he would put on. And um, 
So they're actually playing this off like it's a real thing. Now, is, is this... Is this predictive of the pro of the gramming here, where they're trying to get you ready for the fact that they're going to reveal themselves as these demonic yeah. entities? I mean, it says earlier. Misdirection. Actually, what's that? It's misdirection. Yeah, it says, else is it says rare condition causes man to see people, people's faces as demonic. So are we going to suddenly start seeing demons roaming the streets? And they're going to claim it's not that there's demons around the streets. It's your fault. You're just you just have a strange disease called PMO. We're going to have to take you away. I'm sorry. So it'll get to the point where people won't want to admit that they saw the demons because they don't want to be carted away and put in the straitjacket. You know, because they're the they're the nut jobs, not not the actual demons walking around. Wow. Okay, that's pretty crazy. For Shara, that means grotesque grimace, elongated eyes, and deeply etched scars. Also, pointy ears. Shara shared his story in a study published yesterday in the... Okay, so you're going to have pointy ears, a grimace on your face, pointy eyes, but but this is all because you are having hallucinations, not because it's a terrifying disorder. It's a rare, extremely rare, yet terrifying disorder called prosipo metamorphopsis. Ops, yeah. Were you going to share about this, Tadra? You said you, you heard about this? All I said is that I saw it trending in Google. Oh. That's when I looked at it, too. And I just automatically was like, y'all are, you, <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to keep my mouth shut on that one because uh, I'm probably going to say something that's not great. Okay. All right. Like what? Like what? I want to hear. That's what I want to hear. Well, it's interesting. <laughs> Well, we don't want the not great, but we want something great. Share something great. <laughs> um, so John well, O in YouTube is saying that it's been around a while. You can see the same thing if you look at a DOT. I don't know what that means. It's kind of just part of the brain that goes weird on you. Okay. It sounds, I mean, I it sounds like a bad acid trip or something. Does it say what part of the brain it is? Um, I don't know. saying that um, Prince William... You know, he's reptilian and he's a shapeshifter and stuff. Uh-huh. That's kind of weird. Yep, we talked about that too. Right. So it sounds like a good cover to make it out that, no, you're you're just having illness. Like the woman on the plane who said she saw the guy change shape. Yeah. And they can just say she's yeah. nuts. Yep. And what what I saw did nothing look like it. It looked exactly like a lizard. Like they looked, it had its gills and this, everything was different. It was not like that. That was, that's nothing <laughs> What I saw was like it was scary, mm-hmm. real. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because you can LFL. report me. You can report me right now if you want. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming for you, man. They're coming for you. <laughs> You've seen it. You've seen too much. Why do they all look um, like elves? I know I've seen videos. I think I don't know if it's on TikTok or something like that. But there's been videos that people have posted of like. Entities chasing people down the street. Maybe elves. Oh, yeah. Elves are real. Is that what they're trying to tell us? Or elves are demons? Or no, uh, but elves are real, but they're not. They're some kind of demon. <laughs> well, are they? Are elves combined with cat people? It looks like something. Some kind of combo platter there, and the Joker. Some some mix between the three. Yeah, and aren't their it's eyes like yellow or something too. like that? Maybe I don't. I don't know. I mean. I can't, I'm trying to play it in parts, but uh, I don't think she said much more than that, just that they have kind of pointy ears and funny eyes and everything. So, I don't know. Something to consider there. So, okay, interesting. Or just simply reptilian eyes that can, like, we would perceive it as, like, cat eyes where they change. Speaking of Where it's, like, round and then it goes to straight. Speaking of features that are changing... um, (coughs) <coughs> is is this a deep fake? This release, this 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 release of this latest video. Um, she just doesn't have makeup. She definitely doesn't have makeup. That's that's for sure. Which is odd for her because she usually always has makeup, and it's very strange that she would do a a video where you're kind of recovering from something without kind of putting on your best face to say, "Hey, I'm doing, but I'm doing great. I'm looking healthy." Instead, she looked pretty haggard, and and no makeup. So I, I found that kind of uh, intriguing. That she wouldn't so the, the one picture, just from what I see, um, on Kate's left side, mm-hmm. new Kate versus old Kate, there's a dimple in one picture and there's not a dimple in the other one. I was watching this video earlier today. Like, well, I'm also 
I'm also her seeing a vein in her different. forehead. Yeah. What's what's you in the forehead? That vein? There's a vein. Oh, yeah. There's kind of a vein, I guess. And is there and is the hairline different? Someone mentioned that that the hairline might be changed. One's I don't think flat, her eyebrows kind of round. I, I still think God would like her on the left better than on the right. <laughs> um, yeah. No makeup. Well, what's interesting about this, guys, is that there was this video she did seven years ago. Um, and this is a video of her where she opens the video in the same sweater, almost looking like the, exactly the same with the hair, kind of low makeup. And uh, it was seven years ago, 2017. We are the seventh anniversary now of of both the uh, the the eclipse that took place in 2017. Also, we had the uh, we had the infamous Revelation 12 sign, right? 2017. So a lot, a lot there. Seven years, and then we have uh, her come on the scene. So could it be that this was a video that was filmed at that time um, of her talking about something? Who knows? Maybe like on a bed. I mean, it looks kind of like the same park that they're in, and. Uh, was she just sitting on a bench? They filmed it. Maybe they never used it. And they're like, oh, we can use this video. That does look like the same place. Doesn't it? Yeah. If, if you look at it, if you actually watch this video, mm -hmm. I didn't see anything move in the background. So if she's really outside, that doesn't work for me. That like a green screen. Yeah. yeah, something. She did it in if, however, not AI, AI. Mm -hmm. It's something in a AI, studio AI. at the very yeah, and I noticed she's so still in the video. It's almost like they coached them, like, hey, don't move at all because that'll mess up the deepfake, you know? So let's keep you as still as possible so that you hardly move. I mean, she, she just stays in that pose. I mean, her hands move a little bit, but she stays in that pose the whole time. And uh, that, too, is a little bit uh, intriguing. And then there's this Are interesting... Are you saying the deepfake is a robot? <laughs> no. And I apologize for the on, any on-screen profanity. I can't control that. This is, but this is part of somebody else's thing I'm sharing here. But uh, but I wanted to show you this. Notice she has this ring on her finger, but it seems to disappear as it gets lifted up here. Let me see if I can. So notice here. Look at the. You see. You see it's gone there. See it's gone. Yeah. Okay. Let me just do that one more time. So there's a ring on her left hand and the one on top. And as she lifts it up, the ring's gone. What's this? Bye bye ring. No ring. Ring is gone. And now it's back. You see that? One more time, just for fun. In case you missed it. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Ring. I don't see it. Okay. Now watch her lift it up. No ring. Yeah, you don't see no it. Ring. Yeah, then we she see put, it. Puts it back down and she has a ring again. You see it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that's like what Louie was talking about. And they showed it in, in close ups in this these pictures. So she has the ring when it's together but then she lifts up the hands and there's no ring on the finger and then she puts it back down and the ring is there again so is it because she went out of the frame you know it's, it's kind of like uh in green screen or whatever you know you can't move too much or or the deep fake side of it i guess if they're trying to deep fake the hands too perhaps i i don't know because maybe the hand even changes maybe it's not just the ring maybe the hand's changing a little bit so something to consider there so what is what is really going on here with Kate, you know, I thought of that that musical "Kiss Me, Kate." You know, heard that? Heard that? Uh, but uh, it's based on Taming of the Shrew, and is there some connection there? You know, is she the shrew that wouldn't be tamed, so they had to tame her? Um, I almost watched Ten Things I Hate About You with Jessica Stiles at night last night too. Oh, is that is that based on that too? Yes. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, and so actually, I, that movie has Heath Ledger in it too, and he actually did play the Joker in a different movie. He did, yes, he did, and that was the I, end, I that, did, was, that was the end of him I, as well, unfortunately. Sorry, sorry, I can chime in. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, I did hear something about with these royal families, and I don't know how deep this goes, but these people are not the best of people, from my understanding. Um, back whenever Princess D took a dive in a limo going in some tunnel somewhere. Mm -hmm. They said that, or I, I heard rumors that her usefulness to the Royal family was done. And mm. like the, the theory I heard and it kind of rings true, like maybe and the other rumors around this woman with some other man or not, mm -hmm. like kind of like princess D 
mm. where all of a sudden she violated codes against these people and mm -hmm. now she's done away with. Yeah. Thanks for using code. I appreciate I, that. I'm not trying to go that dark, but I don't I don't put anything beyond these people. So yeah. yeah. Well, you know, something that came to mind was um uh you know, they're talking here about uh the connection of Purim her being hidden away. Uh, but I was also thinking about and now I'm forgetting my thought. Um, but, uh, uh, it'll come to me, but, but, but let me but go, go ahead. Were you going to say something, uh, there, um, Oriana? Oh, no, I was just, I was, I've heard the same things as Aaron. So I was just like in agreement. Oh, I know what it was. Sorry. Um, yeah, that's okay. the antichrist will have nothing to do with women is implied in scripture or it's, it's mm -hmm. one, one way of looking at that scripture. Um, so could it be a way to eliminate her before he takes uh, the throne as well so that there's no woman in the picture to fulfill prophecy? Something that I was think, thinking might be a possibility. Um, interesting that they're comparing her to Purim here. Uh, I found a, two different articles that did that. Um, and uh, this one and this one, the hidden themes of Kate's hiding and uh, both of these refer to Purim. So are they trying to fulfill something for Purim too? We, as we know, Esther was sort of hidden away for a year, right? Uh, with beauty treatments and then she came back. So it's interesting they would make that comparison. I mean, obviously it's Purim. So the timing of it, we're, we're here at Purim. We're at, Purim is, for those who don't know, is, is a time in, in the book of Esther when uh, the Jews were being persecuted and they were going to be attacked and killed. Uh, but uh, they were allowed ultimately to defend themselves, and so it didn't go as originally planned, but Haman kind of plotted against the Jews to re eliminate them, and that's what Purim, Purim is a, a remembrance of that, and uh, Esther was the one who stood up against this happening and talked to the king. She was the queen, and she wasn't really allowed to go to the, go to the king, but she did anyway, and for such a time as this, and she stood up and famously uh, won the... Uh, you know, one, 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 her, her, her request from the King and ultimately helped save the Jews from, from perishing. So, um, so is there any connection there? Is, is she standing up for something? Is it, I mean, it's interesting. Why would they connect her with Esther of all things? Kind of intriguing. Uh, and tomorrow is Shushan Purim. Is that correct? And Adar 15. Mm hmm. Yeah. And, and Adar 15, was the day that they declared um, the C to the one to the nine to be mm. a certain mm. certain um, thing, mm. which was March 11th back then, mm -hmm. but it was a dark 15. And a dark 15 is also when Moses was named and circumcised. That was eight days after mm. his birth. Okay. So yeah. kind of, a really uh, interesting day tomorrow. Yeah, and it's and we've got that eclipse having the same day as well. Uh, today's Purim, tomorrow's shoe shine Purim. You can get your shoes shined and, on Purim, and uh, yeah, but that and relates to the city moon. of Shushan, the city of Susa yeah. in the Bible. It's a blood moon too, I believe. Yeah, well, it usually it does look that way when it's not a full eclipse. It's it it you know because it kind of reflects onto the sun or onto the moon. So yeah, it usually kind of does have a blood tinge to it. Um, per, oh. per number eclipse. Sorry on that one. It's there's not a blood moon. It's per number. It will be phased out, and it will turn like black, but it's not going to turn red. Well, we shall see tonight. Everyone, well, I everyone won't look at the moon. No storm. But What's that? let me know, guys. I got a massive snowstorm here. So if oh, okay. it does turn, let me know, please. Sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, so very interesting. A lot of things are lining up here. Uh, pretty amazing. Um, and we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, the C to the one to the to the niner there uh, in a little bit too, and in relation to calendar stuff also. So, um, so stick around for that. So, okay. So we've got Kate. Um, it's interesting. Argo, was she trying to take another crown? That's kind of thought that was interesting. Um, so uh, I don't know. Is, is, is there may be more to this picture, you know, to, to dig into there. 
Um, so we've got this lunar eclipse happens tonight, and um, it's a penumbral eclipse. It's uh, ninety percent of the moon will be covered, according to this article, over ninety percent. So almost a full eclipse, and uh, it's interesting. It's called the Worm Moon. We know wormwood has been a big topic of conversation, so that's kind of an interesting uh, term to call it, and. Uh, probably stand to look into that a little bit more, the worm moon. Um, but uh, yeah, there it is. So it's going to be, uh, I'm wondering how long it lasts exactly here. Time. Uh, I think maybe it's, is it further down here? Um, the totality, if you're in the highest phase, it's supposed to be around seven hours. Seven from hours. beginning okay. to from okay. beginning okay but it's around seven. okay cool thanks so um any thoughts there on the penumbral eclipse from 4:58 utc on march 25th that's 11:53 p.m. central time to the grace eclipse being at 7:12 utc or 2:12 a.m. central time what they're saying here so that's so I guess that that's when the greatest eclipse will be I guess at that time so so I guess three hours like you said about seven hours total but it's about three and maybe three and a half to get to the full eclipse was so three and a half is very significant of course three and a half time times and half a time you know Jesus uh, was on the cross three hours uh, three and a half year ministry uh, 33 and a half, perhaps he was, uh, so, or 30 and a half. So interesting. Um, so a great, great eclipse, 90% of the moon will lie inside earth's penumbral shadow, but the penumbral shadow isn't the dark shadow of earth. It's the lighter part of the shadow. Some will look at the moon and swear the eclipse isn't happening. Other very observant people will notice and enjoy the odd light shading on the moon's surface face. Hmm. Okay. Penumbral magnitude, it's a greatest eclipse. Let's see. Um, at mid eclipse, it will cover almost the entire moon. So the duration is about 279.9 minutes. There you go. Any other thoughts on that one? Okay, so that's happening tonight. Time to get penumbral. Woohoo! Let's get penumbral, people. All right, so um, so geomagnetic storm is underway, from what I understand, with possible widespread voltage control problems. Some protective systems will mistakenly trip out key assets from the grid. You may experience surface charging and tracking problems. Corrections may be needed for orientation problems. Induce pipeline currents affect preventative measures. Okay, so that's one thing they're saying is happening. Uh, and that's also today, from my understanding. It says, breaking now, massive geometric storm hits Earth. Uh, okay, so, um, so that's in, in, in conjunction with this moon. And then supposedly it's cre it can create... Northern Lights in the south. Is this a cover for something we're going to see in the south? Some strange lights in the sky. And they'll say, oh, well, it was just a magnetic storm. That's all. Any thoughts on this one? Nothing? Okay. Mikhail, are, have you ever seen uh, Northern Lights in Florida? Hmm. Northern Lights in Florida would be pretty crazy since they're supposed to be up in Canada and the North Pole. So I don't. I'd be surprised. I mean, so I, I mean, I sat out here I in the North Star State or in the middle of the sticks of Minnesota, which I understand I'm far north, right? Yeah. And I watched, I was sitting out north on the north side of my house and watched the northern lights dance in the sky. And then eventually I had to go out on my southern deck and watch them shoot towards Iowa. Hmm. So, I, I mean, I've heard stories of them going as far south as like Texas, I want to say, but I don't know anyone that can actually tell me that 
So that's why I ask. If anyone out there has seen them, that's way further south than me. Yeah, let us know. I'd like to know about this too. Yeah, I've never seen them. I would love to see them, but I never have. They're beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I've seen pictures, so yeah, I would love to see them in person and video. But uh, so, okay. So that so that's happening, and then we've got supposedly more National Guard, and we've got Arizona or Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, um, I believe is what we've heard so far. I mean, there's a lot of National Guards are coming out for the for the eclipse. Um, Oklahoma is Oklahoma in the path of the eclipse? Maybe a little bit, huh? Uh, I don't know. That makes me wonder. Makes me wonder. Eclipse. Um, hey. Path. Yeah. Um, Brother Rick just gifted a bunch of memberships. Just wanted to let Woo-hoo! you know. Brother Rick. All right. <laughs> Woohoo. He strikes again. He strikes again. He's the giver that keeps on giving. Look at this. He does. Uh, wow. Okay. So let's see who, who got some memberships here. If I can give them shout outs, if I can see them. Do you want to give them shout outs? I don't know if I can see them here. Sure. Okay, go for it. Um, let me get to the beginning. Um, love is love is the key. Paul Morgan, Diana W, Lisa, Rathman Crumley, Caitlin, Terry Reed, Deb Webb, Really Joyful, Jacob Bryant, Water Song, Dave Roger, Johnny, Dominic. <laughs> Omni, sorry, Ketz, Husby, Treasure on 25, Christian, Chris, Christian Shaw, sorry, butchering that, Debra, Cecilia Merrill, Danny, M- M- uh, Danny Miller, and Elfrog. Elfrog? Yeah, I, I know that guy. <laughs> <laughs> that's our own Louie yeah. right here. Woohoo! <laughs> Hey, uh, yeah. congratulations, guys. And thank you so much, Brother Rick, uh, for helping to support this channel. Uh, it does allow me to do this and allows us to, to have this ministry and, and make these things happen. So thank you so much for all your support. And as you all know, in, in addition to these videos, we have other things we do here in the fellowship, prayer nights and uh, uh, movie nights and, and other fun times together, Bible studies. So we hope you come and join us. You can just go to MikhailMinistries.com right there on the screen or the first link in the description and be part of of the fun and fellowship and faith, most importantly. So, uh, so yeah, it looks like it does touch the bottom of Oklahoma there, just on the corner. So I guess that's why they're bringing out the National Guard. It's just a little strange, the whole National Guard thing. Like, do you really need the National Guard to come out on behalf of this eclipse? Sounds like a cover, perhaps, for something else going on there. Now, I've also heard that the the eclipse is running backwards. Like the sun is rising and setting the wrong direction. Is that true? (laughs) It's like all these depictions. I don't understand it. Is it going Uh, from the South to the North? That's an interesting thought. So what, like, how are you asking this? Like, are you asking how you would see it? Cause you're in Colorado and you're not going to see this. Right. You're going to, so if you are looking to the south, the sun is going to rise in the east as it always does. And sometime, I forget what time it is, depending on where you are, the sun will come. The moon should start to eclipse it coming from the west and heading to the east. So it does this weird path, right, as on the map, which I can't explain, right? I'm not an astrophysicist, mm-hmm. but... It should it should appear as though the moon, as it would as a new moon comes every month, the moon would come from the west and cross across the sun going towards the east and block out the sun. Hmm. It's interesting, you know, that with the internet, it's like they can basically gaslight you on anything so quickly because they can simply say, no, that's not true. You know, it's like the first mm-hmm. thing you find here is, no, it's not true. Highlight. Right. You know, like, why would they even highlight that and, and, and point that out and make that the first thing you find? You know, it's just it's like exactly. proper of the Ganda sun and climate moving uh, in opposite directions. I mean, you just can't ask a question anymore without somebody saying, no, how dare you even nope. think, think such a thing. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that is that is strange. Don't know. 
I, I don't know. I can't answer that one. But apparently 54 years ago, they were already looking forward to this eclipse. It's kind of a strange thing to put on the front page of your newspaper in 1970. Uh, it's March. looks like it's March 9th or 8th. March 8th. So like a, a month before April 8th. So March 8th, 1970, they put out this article talking about the eclipse and saying the next showing will be in 2024. And, uh, I mean, for a front page article, it seems kind of, uh, like why, why is that so significant to put on the front page? Maybe they didn't have anything else that week, but, uh, you know, or it sounds cool. I know. I remember back in those days, like 2024. Oh, that sounds far away. That's, that's the future, future, future. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so that's kind of interesting. Newspaper clipping from 1970 predicts 2024 eclipse. The newspaper was from the Washington Post. The prediction was made 54 years ago. Seems like something straight out of the Simpsons. Hint, hint. Um, like they're trying to tell you something there. So, uh, so it is kind of strange, you know, that they would have that article. Do they know what, the, what, what do they know that they know? Uh, the ring of fire. Hmm. Will there be a ring of fire with this eclipse? Hmm. I guess there should all... be in the path of totality. Every single time in the path of totality, there should be that fire ring around it for three dun, or four dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. I don't think that song's about that, though. No, what? It's a bird. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't. Dun, 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 I don't. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's weird. The Ring of Fire has been blowing up with earthquakes this weekend mm. in the South Pacific, like big time. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah, Papua oh, New Guinea. The That's earthquake like Ring of Fire. Nine. Yeah. Speaking of earthquakes and rings of fire. Uh, there were some earthquakes that took place. Apparently, like what we're experiencing right now, we're having a, a penumbral, a moon eclipse tonight. Two weeks from now, we'll have the actual solar eclipse. Well, apparently the same thing happened back in 1811. They had this moon eclipse and solar eclipse in the same area, it seemed like. And then right after that, they had the biggest earthquakes in American history mm-hmm. called the New Madrid earthquakes. So... Um, are we are we going to have another? Are, are we going to have new earthquakes? The greatest earthquakes in American history, and apparently, this demon comet or devil comet also took place the same year. It happens every seventy one years, and if you do the math, it takes you back. Supposedly, I haven't done the math, but I, that's what someone else said uh, to that same year, eighteen eleven, called the Pons Brooks Devil Comet, and that it will also hey, was in the hell. sky that year. Hey, Mikhail, yes, have you done any more background work on this one? Because no. I think I remember like maybe six, eight months ago that they said that this, like the reason why they name it 12P Ponds Brooks is because someone saw this at a certain time not that long ago. Mm. Whether it comes around every 71 years or not, that's that's kind of my question. Are they just making it up that it comes around every 71 years? Because they just named this comet within the last like year or something like that. I don't know. They're they saying, named it, they're saying it, 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 it's it for used, the first time in seventy one years. Falcon, like. Yeah, it says right. with, it says uh, the rare massive comet with a devilish nickname is set to pass by Earth for the first time in seventy one years and may be visible during the highly anticipated April eighth total solar eclipse, according to NASA. Officially named Comet 12P Pons Brooks, the cryovolcanic comet, comet is known as the Devil Comet due to its formation of two horns made up of ice and gas periodic explosions. Comets are made up of dust, frozen gases, ices, and rocks bound together following the formation of the solar system. At least that's what they claim they're made of. How would you know? The Devil Comet is heading for its per- perihelion passage when it will reach its closest point to the Earth and shine the brightest on April 21st. Okay, look for that date. According to NASA, now, of course, we're looking for the 8th, but then 40 days after, we've got uh, Pentecost on the Christian calendar, too. So we're looking for 40 days. It could be a 40-day warning here that we're looking at, uh, which will shadow parts of the Earth from Texas to Maine. The abrupt absence of sunlight during totality, sky watchers will have a view of the vast sky dark enough to observe stars, planets, and perhaps ponds, brooks as it travels through the solar system. Comet 12 P's April 21st perihelion passage will be only two weeks after the April 8 total solar eclipse putting the comet in planet Earth's sky along with the totally eclipsed sun. Continuing its route through the solar system, it will make its closest approach to Earth on June 2nd, offering another opportunity 
to see the devil comet. June 2nd. Hmm. I have to start doing the math on this. However, it's distance from the sun will make it less visible than during the eclipse. Experts previously told. Huh, Likened to Halley's Comet, which has an orbit of 76 years around the sun, Pons Brooks is a short period comet, meaning one that has an orbital period of between 20 to 200 years. The Devil Comet travels on an orbital period of 71 years and was last seen in 1954. Scientists have estimated the Devil Comet has a diameter of at least 70 kilometers, 10.5 miles. The comet's periodic explosions or outbursts make it brighter, easier to spot with telescopes, and in some cases, something people can see from their backyard. Hmm. Suddenly became 100% uh, in July 2023 when it's... What? Okay, so Pons Brooks experienced a major outburst in, 20, in July 2023 when it suddenly became 100 times brighter. Okay. And continued to have periodic explosions on October 5th, November 1st, November 14th, December 14th. Well, that's another day we're going to look at tonight. And January 18th. Wait a minute. Hold on. Uh, respectively, according to space.com. 100 times brighter, you say? Hmm. I wonder if anything special is going to happen. Uh, these outbursts have brought the object from being dim enough that you can only see it with big professional telescopes to, in a couple of cases, something people can see from their backyard. These aren't that many comets. There aren't that many comets that have outbursts. Keep down your outbursts. These sudden increases in brightness and are so strong and even fewer that have them a couple of times during one orbit. It seems like Pons Brooks is just really active. I bet it is. Dr. Elliot Herman, a retired professor. I don't know. People have sort of like this guy. Okay. Wow. Interesting. Um, mm, very, very intriguing indeed. A hundred times brighter, you say. And interesting dates that happen to coincide with that brightness, the periodic explosions. So is there any connection with this and these strange earthquakes? Okay. So going back here to New Madrid, uh, when these earthquakes took place shortly after these, these eclipses that they had in 1811, then they had all these strange events that took place. They had earthquakes that took place. They also had the Mississippi ran backwards. How does that happen? Now, I'm guessing maybe because a, a, a fissure opened up and the water was going into it or something from the earthquake or something like that. I don't know. But the force of land upheaval 15 miles says on February 7th, the earthquake boatmen reported that the Mississippi actually ran backwards for several hours, getting over cracks. As a general area experienced more than 2,000 earthquakes in five months. Whoa, five months? That sounds like uh, Revelation 9, five months, is uh, how long these scorpions are to attack. Uh, the flying scorpions with, men, with faces of men and hair and teeth. Uh, that's interesting. And then there's earthquake phenomena, sand boils. The world's largest sand boil was created by the New Madrid earthquake, 1.4 miles long and 130 acres in extent. Seismic tar balls, small pellets up to golf ball size. Boy, this kind of sounds like uh, tribulation stuff, you know, <laughs> are found in sand boils. Like, what if tar, tar balls just start falling from the sky? They're petroleum that has solidified. Uh, lights flash from the ground. Earthquake lights caused by quartz crystals being squeezed. So they say the phenomena is called seismoluminescence. Ooh. Warm water. Water thrown up by an earthquake was lukewarm. Ah, uh, don't be lukewarm. It is speculated that the shaking caused by the water to heat up and her quartz light heated the water. Earthquake smog. The skies turned dark. Ooh, skies turned dark. Man. During the earthquake, so dark that lighted lamps that lighted lamps didn't help. Lighted lamps didn't help. That sounds right out of the book of Exodus, right? When they couldn't they, even the lights, they they couldn't light. They, they couldn't even see anything, right? When when the uh, the three days of darkness happened, the air smelled bad. And it was hard to breathe. It's speculated that it was it is it was smog containing dust particles caused by the eruption of warm water into cold air. Loud thunder, sounds of distant thunder, and loud explosions accompanied the earthquakes. Man, people must have been freaking out. They must have thought it was the end of the world in 1811. People reported strange behavior by animals before the earthquakes. They were nervous and excited. Domestic animals became wild and wild animals became tame. <laughs> and children lived together. The wolf and the lamb lied down. Okay, so domestic animals became wild and wild animals became tame. Snakes came out of the ground from hibernation. Flocks of ducks and geese landed near people. Okay, Tecumseh's Comet. Okay, so this is the Devil's Comet apparently that appeared. Tecumseh's Comet and the Battle of Tippecanoe. Hey, you tip on my canoe. The earthquakes were preceded by the appearance of a great comet, which was visible around the globe for 17 months. Hmm. And was at its brightest during the earthquakes. Hmm. The comet with an orbit of 3,065 years was last seen during the time of Ramses the second. What? Are you telling me this comet could go all the way back to the Exodus? What? Exodus. Da -da 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 -da. So you're telling me this comet, this devil comet, May actually go back 
to the time of the Exodus and the three days of darkness? Wow. Okay, this is this is too much. 1811, 1812 was called Tecumseh's Comet or Napoleon's Comet in Europe. Tecumseh was a Shawnee Indian leader whose name meant shooting star or he who walks across the sky. He was given this name at birth. A great orator and military leader, Tecumseh organized a confederation of Indian tribes to oppose the takeover of three million acres. Okay, don't have to know the whole backstory. I just need to know what happened with this earthquake and this comet. Okay, so after the day of the black sun, what? Black old sun. Okay, so this is this is the this is the this is an eclipse we're talking about here. After the day of the black sun, the brothers had no trouble attracting followers. A black sun was said to predict a future war. A W A R. On September 17th, 1811, there was another solar eclipse, which again was predicted by the prophet. The brothers' center of operations was at Prophet's Town, located near the junction of Wabash. Wabash? I know that street. And Tippecanoe, rivers in northern Indiana. Tecumseh was traveling and recruiting warriors among the southeastern tribes when Governor Harrison attacked Prophet's Town with over a thousand men. Wow, guys. The earthquakes continue as they travel back to Prophet's Town. So the earthquakes and the black sun. Huh. And it goes back to the time of Ramses II and the exodus from Egypt, perhaps? The first steamboat on the western water survived the earthquakes. Wow. And this is all on the same line that this eclipse is going to go. You seeing this? Are you seeing this? Oh man! Hey, this Mikhail. Is, yeah. So may I jump in for a second? Please um, jump. During this period of time, you can find writings from old newspapers out east, mainly because there weren't a lot of newspapers in the heart of the country. Mm -hmm. Um, but there were like with the smell of sulfur, that was a thing. If in the newspaper articles that I've seen and read and scanned over online, because that's the best I can do, they said if you smelt sulfur, you needed to run inside because those that lingered out in the sulfur were dead when they come, came out and find them in the morning. Mm. Yep, that's true, because that lady who told me about the New Madrid fault light last year, when I was on the phone with her, she told me that same thing. Yeah. There was So in this period of time between eight... 11 or 12 and i believe 1833 there is this massive things that started to happen in the sky i in i'm going to jump ahead to 1833 but there is recorded to be the most vibrant meteor shower oh. where the one the one guy was saying it was a, a hundred thousand meteors per hour hmm but this was in this period of time from 1811 or 12 to 1833, there's a lot of stories about meteors in the sky, calamities, mm. sulfur in the air. And not so, one, well, none you, of the meteors get through, though. What's that? None of the meteors what? None of the meteors get through. Meteors don't get through, though. The, the firm, if there are such things, yes. You can see them. You can see them blow. Well, unless, well, and there, unless they're and so there, big they can't burn up in, in, in time. There's a spot in Revelation, and this is maybe getting way ahead or way behind myself, but there's a spot in Revelation where it talks about a third of the stars falling from the sky. Mm -hmm. And that's I'm right. not saying that's that thing, but I don't know because I wasn't having those dreams that John was, or visions. Well, there's a lot about three hey, days like in this story. Uh, it says they approached New Madrid on the 19th, three days after the earthquake. And then again, they talk about three days here. In fact, they had not seen a boat ascending the river in three days. So there's a lot with three days. You know, when you were talking about the sulfur, it made me think, you know, does it affect firstborn sons in, in particular? Um, you know, does this relate to the creeping death in any way and why they had to stay in their home uh, so they wouldn't smell the sulfur? I don't know if uh, there might be any connection there, but uh, it's kind of an intriguing thought. Okay. Any other thoughts on this? It just sounds like um, Revelation to me, like Revelation 6, I guess. Yeah, an Exodus Where it says 12. I walk. Yeah, but it's talking about how, you know, the, the moon turns blood red. Mm -hmm. which now NASA is saying, oh, the moon is rusting. <laughs> um, right, right. And the stars on earth and um, shaken by a strong wind in the heavens. Um, the, the scroll was being rolled up. I just read this to my son today because he was like, what's what's the deal? Why is everybody getting so concerned? And so mm -hmm. we were just kind of talking through it. But um, and then the kings of the earth and the princes and the generals and the rich and the mighty and all those people mm -hmm. who 
are fearful hide themselves in the mountains mm-hmm. or in you know and ask the <laughs> yeah ask that the rock fall on them and cover them from the face of of the wrath of the lamb right so, is, is this a, is this revelation this, six is what you're saying and perhaps ezekiel 38 yeah, ezekiel. is tied in where there's that that as well if there's you know right but uh but yeah uh, revelation six the, an earthquake that's the biggest earthquake you know an earthquake throughout the world and uh i guess not the biggest one there's a bigger one later in revelation but uh but definitely a big one and where the mountains are moved and out of their place and so forth and there's a lot of mountains along this area too actually right so yeah so maybe that's what they mean by the mountains being moved from their place because when you have an earthquake everything gets shaken the mountains are going to get shaken yep. wow right very and interesting isn't that, I thought it said- it, in revelation the sign of the dragon when the stars are falling and stuff like that yeah and this is the year of the dragon well you know speaking of stars mm-hmm. falling um these people saw mm-hmm. what they thought were angels falling from the sky or something but uh this is in <laughs> california and uh they uh they're talking in the video and they're saying it looks like angels you know that's what they that's kind of what they're saying um and uh, is it like late figs falling from a, a fig tree or something? But they see tons of these lights. They're twinkling like stars. And if you think about the stars falling, um, you know, they would look like twinkling like that. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. So, um, oh. yeah. Did I read a comment from YouTube? Okay. Um, Sammy Thompson says also that Canada ocean floor is tearing apart. The ocean floor is tearing apart. Say that again. Are you still? Does there? that mean the kraken is being released? Yeah, I don't know. He's th- he's thinking maybe um, or she. I don't know. Sorry, I don't know if you're <laughs> male or female. I'm sure they. Um, that awakens the dead in Christ. Um, That's what they're saying. So so what's happening to the ocean floor though? It's tearing apart. It's separating. Ocean floor tearing apart. Okay, let's let's take a look at this real quick. Ocean floor tearing apart. Uh, at the Endeavor site, the Pacific Plate and the Juan Franco Plate are pulling apart. This stretching creates long linear fault lines and thins the crust, enabling magma to rise up. When the magma reaches the surface, it cools and hardens, becoming new ocean crust. Hmm. 2,000 earthquakes in one day off Canada. Is that what she's talking about in Canada? Uh, maybe. I think that's what you yeah. said, right? Uh, Canada, for 2, sure. 2,000 earthquakes in one day on March 21st. What? Hold on a second. This sounds exactly like the New Madrid thing that's going on. Mm-hmm. There were there were thousands of earthquakes. It wasn't, didn't they say 2,000 as well? Wasn't that the same yeah. number? Yeah, they did. Oh, hold on a second. Now, okay. now I'm, being, now I'm hey. getting intrigued. Hey, Mikhail, while you're doing this little yes, search. Yes, look, 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 look. Um, Look, hold on one sec. 18, from no, December 16th, 1811 through March of 1812, there were over 2,000 earthquakes in the central Midwest and between 6,000 to 10,000 earthquakes in the boot heel of Missouri, where New Madrid is located near the junction of the Ohio and Mississippi, <coughs> Mississippi rivers. Look at that. Wow. That's amazing. Okay, go ahead, brother. Okay, so, um, and maps that you can find go, dating back into the 1600s, um, it had... A California as an island mm-hmm. and uh, like where the Great Salt Lake is or the lack thereof because it keeps fading away into more salt on the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, it There are theor- – well, a- again, old maps dating back to the 1600s where there was an Intermount Lake like 200 miles in like diameter and California was an island. And the theory goes – that around this time in um, the 1800s that massive earth- earthquakes came down the West Coast and flowed up into the New Madrid area and mm. changed California into part of being the continental part of North America and that um, that massive Intermountain Lake up in the Utah-Wyoming area broke free and flooded out. Mm. And now we're left with... And also... Um, there are stories of this land being divided by two rivers. 
where the Missouri once flowed mm. further west and flowed out into the Gulf of Mexico around Houston instead of flowing into the Mississippi at St. Louis. Okay. Wow. I know that's okay. a lot to unpack, but there's this big shift yeah. apparently around Con- that continental, period of time. continental drift, continental shift. Almost, Something. Almost 2,000 earthquakes rocked a spot off the coast of Canada in a single day earlier this month. Now, this is this month right now that we're in right now. This is from March 21st, 2024, so just a couple days ago, and uh, which could be a sign that new oceanic crust is about to be birthed via a deep mag- magmatic rupture. Wow. Okay, so we've got that, and you combine that with... What happened here, there were over 2,000 earthquakes in the central Midwest and then between 6,000 to 10,000 in Boot Hill of Missouri, etc. So, interesting timing for all this. Wow. Other thoughts on this? May I chime in one more time on this? I'm please, sorry, please my chime. voice is gone. <laughs> um, with this whole, like, cataclysmic thing, I've, like, seen, read things about... Like where Victoria Falls is in Africa, it used to be Lake Victoria. And mm-hmm. there was this big intermountain lake in like Colombia in South America. Mm-hmm. And prior like to this period of time, those existed. Mm-hmm. But now they don't. Right. And one again, one of these theories that goes is that people know that the the world, the place that we live on goes through these cataclysmic changes along the way every so often in a rhythm Mm -hmm. and 1812 was one of those or that area that 1812 to 1830 period was 1812 we had as well well and but that's when like the french revolution started and there were other massive upheavals like governmental upheavals all around the world at that time Mm -hmm. so if the theory goes that these people knew that this was coming, right? And they waited for it. And then when everything kind of broke loose, they capitalized on it. Order out of chaos mm-hmm. kind of thing. Like, I don't know. I wasn't there, but Are theories sure? and things. Oh, okay. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. So all of these things could be repeating themselves, basically. Inclu- Nothing new under the sun. Including the WA to the R's may be involved in this as well. So uh, something to consider there. Wowza. Okay. So is this where we're, where we're going to have the infamous black of the swan of the event? A black swan event is a phrase commonly used in the world of finance. It's an extremely negative event or occurrence that is impossibly difficult to predict. In other words, black swan events are events that are unexpected or unnotable. But they say you often see, see them in hindsight. Like... 9 to the 1 to the 1, or what happened in 2008, the crash of 2008, and things like that. So are we going to have an event? To, is that, is that going to accompany all these signs, all these things that are happening here? Just throwing it out there. And then uh, this is a, an album called Black Swan. Just happened to come across it while I was looking at Black Swan pictures. And uh, it's got a big number 7 on the front. I'm going to talk a little bit about sevens today, so I just thought that was kind of interesting as well. Rapture America, the only town named Rapture in all of America, will be in the path of the eclipse. Is that just coincidence, perhaps? Or is that a sign? Interesting to consider. Um, we're talking about the calendar. we kind of already been talking about that, so we're on, we're on Purim right now. Or Yeah, I guess we're kind of finishing out depending on where you are in the world. So Purim is happening, celebration of Jewish deli- deliverance, as told by Megalet Esther. Uh, so Esther, the story of Esther, basically. Um, so that's happening. And then tomorrow we have Shushan Purim, which is for the people in the town, in the other town, they celebrate the next day in Shushan or Susa. Um and then we've got the uh, Red Heifer Day is coming up here. Red Heifer Sabbath. Are they going to try to make it happen on that day? Now, this is Palm Sunday. Today's Palm Sunday, which is another great day to... It's another great day for rapture, wouldn't you say? Um, it's, it's not only Palm Sunday, but it's also Purim. So, like, what a great combo that is. Um, and, uh, and we know that in Revelation 7, we're holding palm branches, right? So, you know, there could be a connection there. Um, it could also, we're just a couple weeks before 
Nissan 10, where we have, uh, you know, the actual Palm Sunday on the Jewish calendar um, as well. So, which is Lamb Selection Day, which God could be selecting his lambs and taking them into heaven. So that's another possibility. I've done a few videos on that. So um, I don't know. Any thoughts on that one? Let's take a look here. Shabbat. Is it this one? Shabbat Parah? Sabbath of the Red Heifer. Okay, so that's coming up this Saturday is Shabbat Parah, which is Sabbath of the Red Heifer. It takes place on the Shabbat before Shabbat HaKodesh in pre- preparation for Passover. Which is interesting because, you know, you're supposed to, the first day of the month, take a lamb into your home, right? So we know that the last day of the month is going to be on the solar eclipse uh, going into the first day of the month. That's when you're supposed to take, uh, no, I'm sorry. Is it the first day? No, it's on the 10th day. What am I saying? So the first day of the month, by the 10th day of the month, you take the lamb into your home, and then five days later, you have Passover. So here they're saying this is Shabbat uh, Parah, where you're sacrificing the red heifer, which is to purify the temple and the priests and everything related to that. It's part of the manner in which the Kohanim, which is a priest, and the Jewish people purify themselves so that they would be ready, pure, to sacrifice the Korban Pesach, or the Passover lamb. So, wow. Okay, that's... That's significant. So are they going to try to make that happen, you think? Um, what, what's what's the vote? What's what, what do you think, guys? Place your bets. Step right up. Step right up. <laughs> Will they sacrifice the lamb this Saturday? Or I'm not the lamb, but the heifer. Will they be sacrificing so, red, red heifer? What do you think? Like, Mikhail, is, I looked up. I typed it in when is Passover, and I got a different date. So are we looking at like this? Easter Passover, or are we looking at Jewish Passover? Because I'm question. confused, because Jewish Passover is like in the middle of April, isn't it? Well, this is, okay. Well, 13 hours ago, massive altar for red heifer sacrifice constructed in Israel. We, we, we've already been talking about this, but everybody seems to be talking about this. This is just from 13 hours ago, this article. Um, so everybody's kind of looking at this as we're approaching red heifer Sabbath on the Jewish calendar. So the Christian calendar is different than the Jewish calendar. So it's not, there is no red heifer Sunday, I don't think, on the Christian calendar. Maybe they have that, and I, I would doubt that. But uh, massive altar for red heifer sacrifice construction in Israel two days ago. So, I mean, this, was, this has been going on for a while, as we know. We've been talking about it for, for, for well, for years, literally. But uh, we've been talking about it certainly uh, more than just recently. But they're pointing this out. Uh, as we approach this red heifer Sabbath. So, so I, I just, I just looked up on um, whatever duck, duck go just told me is, and it's probably the Jewish Sabbath. And if they're going to do this, these people are going to do this on the Jewish, probably Jewish Passover or somewhere around that time and not on Easter. Yeah. I just looked it up and it told me that Passover is on the 22nd through the 29th. But if you can tell me I'm wrong, mm-hmm. please, because the AI is questionable anymore. No, no, no. That, that is correct. I mean, the Passover is not until until the 14th or 15th of Nisan, which falls on this Jewish calendar on the uh, 20, you know, 22nd, 23rd. That's, you know, when Jesus would have been sacrificed and then raised on the third day on the 17th, um, which I did a whole video called In That Day, where I go over the fact that it's the 17th for Christ, 17th for Moses and the Exodus going through the Red Sea, and also the 17th for Noah and the Ark. So um, so anyway, but uh, yeah, so, so Passover is not coming yet, but this particular Sabbath coming up on this coming Saturday is called Shabbat Parah on the Jewish calendar, and that's called Red Heifer Sabbath, where uh-huh. they perhaps logically might attempt, if not successfully attempt to uh, sacrifice the red heifer on that day. So they've got oh, the altar. Are, are you telling me that there's going to be another war that's going to, or a bigger war that's going to pop off in the next week? You mean a WA to the R? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. No, those <laughs> things. Sorry. The words we shall not yes. speak. <laughs> he, the, he, the, the event that will, that will not be named. Um, Yes. Uh, well, it could be. I mean, it could be. But, but, but apparently this is, this is something that they're going to do on the mountain across from the temple area. So it's not going to be a thing where they're going to try to do it on the temple, but that they would actually do it in sight of the temple, which they claim is what they did. The Kohanim or the priest did back in the, day, in the olden days 
where they go across the way and they even believe there was a bridge that connected the two across the valley and they would do it on the top of the Mount of Olives, essentially. Uh, right. They, they needed to do it on the Mount of Olives facing Mount Moriah. Right. Which is where the Mount is. Yeah. Facing the Eastern gate, which looks into the temple door, temple, temple doorway. Right. So that's where they would yep. do it. So that's, that's probably where they would attempt to do it on Saturday with, which may or may not be really contested much by the Islamic contingent. As long as they're not messing with the temple mile, they probably don't care so much. Um, I, I've heard, and I've heard of, again, the rumblings that I can hear is that the Arab nations, which are surround this place are not interested in that happening. Yeah, I mean, in general, they don't like it because it, it, all of it points to them still claiming the temple, you know, so they definitely don't like it. Uh, but will they get away with it? Will they do it? That, that's the question. So, so W A R Trace <laughs> is what you just said. Uh, I plead the faith. Kind of. Um, kind of. So, okay. Well, there you go. So. 50 and 5, have you guys heard about this? So 50 nations, so Mr. Mr. Gates of the hell himself um, is, of course, behind this. He, they never stop. But they've gotten 50 nations to already sign on, it seems, to in the next five years, they're going to implement digital ID in some form or another. And they give a map here of who's involved. Oh, here it is. So these, these are the suspects who supposedly are going to be implementing in the next five years some form of digital ID. They had like three different aspects of it that they were implementing uh, in one of these videos here. But uh, yeah, so that's happening. Um, so they don't stop. So let's see. Uh, uh, see if I can find a little bit more on this implementing digital public infrastructure safely, safely and inclusively. Oh, the oh yeah, they want you to be included. That's for sure. Um, digital public infrastructure refers to a secure and interoperable network of components that include digital identity, payments, and data exchange systems. Don't because you want to do that, right? You want to exchange all your data with the world, you know, and uh, they can use that again. You want all your money out there to be able to be taken, and of course your identity. To be stolen. Implementing DPI is essential to facilitating participation in markets and society in a digital era and is needed for all countries to build resilient and innovative economies for the well-being of people. Uh-huh. So um, what's the goal? The goal of 50 and 5 for, is for 50 countries to have designed, implemented, and scaled at least one component of their digital public infrastructure in a safe, inclusive, and interoperable manner in five years by the end of 2028. So there you go. Any any thoughts on that one? Just something to look forward to. Mark of the Beast. Mark of the Beast is happening, guys. Woohoo! You cannot participate in society if you don't have the mark. So yeah. Okay. That's happening. Uh, any other thoughts on that one? Silence falls across the land. Say it isn't so, it isn't so. Okay, well, amen. Um, well, are we still up for more, or do we want to end there and maybe come back next week with the other stuff? Because I don't know if I've worn you out. <laughs> okay, maybe I'll take that as a yes. Um, all right, well, this has been good. I think we looked at some good stuff. Maybe we'll touch on some of these other things next time. Uh, but there was. Hey, Mikhail. Yeah. Mikhail. Sorry. Uh, Mary Cat in our chat here said, question, what if you are forced by force to take the mark? And I'm not sure this is quite what you're looking for, but you asked for questions. And mm -hmm. she wants you to keep going. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, I have a lot. Of, maybe I will keep going just, just, to, just to get it done so I don't have to travel the same ground again. But uh, there's just so, many, so much good stuff here. But I'll, I'll go over it quickly. Um, so basically... Uh, the cult of Baal. Okay, so recently we talked about, um, and then oh man, there's just there's so many good things. Uh, so I'll, I'll just I'll breeze over it quickly, and if we want to revisit, I guess we can revisit another time. But basically, uh, you may recognize this tree. It's called the tree of life in Kabbalism, which is 
the tree of life is a diagram used in rabbinical Judaism and Kabbalah and other mystical traditions derived from it. She's referred to as the Kabbalistic tree of life. So this is, you know, cultic non-Bible stuff that they're just making up and following, you know, the rules, teachings of men rather than the teaching, the rules, the laws of God. And so there's this um, interesting map that they've put together that has Canaanites at the top and at the bottom it has the USA. I don't know if you guys can see this on your screen or not. Well, maybe you can. Um, but it's kind of small. But uh, but yeah, basically you've got Babylon, the Pharaohs, Roman, Judea, Tem- uh, the Knights of the Templar, Khazar, the May of the Son, the Jesu of the Its, the Illumin of the Nutties, and the USA is at the bottom. Canaanites from the Canaanites to the to and then they've got Baal worship on one side and human sacrifice on the other, and then there's a lot of fine print uh, that can go along with that, but. Kind of an intriguing uh, thing that maybe we could explore more of at another point, but just kind of wanted to mention that. I thought that was interesting. And then here is a temple of Baal, in case you've never seen one. It looks kind of like any other temple, but uh, they worship false gods in there. These are the kind of things they would tear down. The Israelites would tear these down back in their day. So uh, if you see one, you know. Uh, there you go. That's the example set. So uh, Baal Ensi of the Aga means Baal is the king. So if you've given money to that uh, company, you might want to rethink that thought. But uh, but anyway, that's what it actually translates to from Latin. And we had talked about that once before. Um, in Sunrise, Florida, all these uh, moving vans just suddenly have appeared in this parking lot. Um and, and according to the video, she's like, they, were, they weren't here before, and now suddenly they're here. Um, preparing for. Please, tell me if anybody knows, what are they preparing for? Here you got the big old light set up. So they got all these lights set up. The, the police are there, and there are all these moving vans just suddenly filling this <coughs> whole parking lot. Uh, I don't know, unless they're starting a, a budget rental store there or something. But uh, she turns the corner here and goes down the side and you see more. But it is kind of odd. You wonder what could be in them. Did they rent a bunch of trucks because they needed to move certain stuff uh, that they didn't want known that they're moving, for example? You know, because whenever, whenever we see the military trucks moving, right, everybody knows about it. So is this something that they're trying to hide that we don't know about? There's also Enterprise trucks there and they're all lined up in this place. Hey, Mikhail. She said the where, other day it where wasn't is there. this? Did you say where this was? This is Sunrise, Florida. Sunrise, okay, thanks. Which is basically right near Fort of the Lauderdale, right there. So that's Sunrise, Florida for you. So, uh, hmm, interesting. Okay, so the Prez. Okay, the Prez. Um, so Bill of the Clint of the Ton has 42nd president on his X profile. Uh, the W has 43rd president on his profile. Mr. T has 45th president. But Mr. O simply has president. <laughs> um, what does this mean? Does this mean he, he, he is the president now? Um, is that what that means? That he really is operating as president behind the scenes? Um are we to read into this, or is he just trying to be sh- use shorthand? What uh, what are we supposed to take away from this one? Um, and uh, so that's that's something to consider. Uh, if you put his uh, d- daughter's names backwards, if they are indeed his daughters, um, Natasha and Malia, uh, I think that's how you say it. Uh, but if you put them backwards together, and you remove, I guess the letters that spell Allah. You get I am Satan. Hmm. Okay. Sure, that's just a coincidence, uh, right? But uh, isn't it interesting that uh, Natasha backwards? I was just thinking the name Natasha says is Ah Satan. Uh, that in itself is. Did you curious. did you hear the whole thing with uh, was the twenty twelve presidential nomination speech? The yes we can thing that he did. Mm, yeah. Where heard, yeah. if you. Back- Oh yeah, yeah. Yes, I heard about we that. Can, says yeah, the, the back masking. Satan. Yeah. Now they say so, that they left over letters spell hail, which they could also spell that. Allah, you can be A L A H, 
which I looked that up, and that is a, an accurate spelling because I thought, well, aren't there two L's? But it says A-L-A-H is a pronoun from the Muslims c- call their moon deity. Now, isn't it interesting? They say it's, it's what the Muslims call their moon deity. <laughs> like they worship the moon. And it's a Hebrew word they inherited, which is true. They have that moon. You what know, if they so. actually are? What's that? What if they actually are worshiping the moon? But also, I'm well, looking at the part where it says the that. root al is spelled aleph, and I was like, we just went over the Hebrew letters. Right. It says, uh, it's a Hebrew word they inherited. Al, Allah, and Alahim all reflect the Hebrew concept, which most understand means God. The root al is, is spelled aleph lamed, meaning upward, exalted, mighty, high, above, etc. Yeah, it's a copycat religion. I mean, you know, they, there's yeah, right. nothing original about it. They, they copied Christianity and Judaism in their religion. It was 600 years after Christianity. He just mystically came up with this on a mountain and said it was a miracle, but uh, similar to Joseph Smith. But uh, but anyway, um, so that is an accurate spe- spelling, A-L-A-H, but it also could be H-A-A-L, which can mean a state of disrepair. Uh, Mr. O was born on the 216th day of the year. Well, we, you know, we knew that. Okay, 666. But uh, so it could be a state of disrepair or it can be Allah. So Allah is taken out and you get I am Satan. Interesting. Just a coincidence, uh, I'm sure. Yeah, and, and last week he um, he went for a visit to the British Prime Minister and then the Belgian royal family. Just that was just very very curious. Mm, mm. Yeah, he did. Just he was just why in he was making those Britain. visits. Making the rounds, is he? Shoring up some final mm-hmm. details, perhaps before the big one. I believe so. Before the yes, Black Swan sir. event. That's well, right. This was the band that was performing when Moss of the Cow was uh, attacked just recently. Was that was that yesterday, two days ago? Um, on 322, ironically. On 322, <laughs> of course. As we all know, 322 is the famous number of the skull to the bone of the ease. So, um, so they just happen to have the all-seeing eye uh, shining there in that poster and they're the ones who were playing at Crocus City Hall during that attack. Now what's interesting is uh, it's kind of similar. It makes me think of the, um, oh, who was that? What's the name of that guy? Uh, it'll come to me, but uh, the art, another artist who was, uh, if you want to call him as such, but uh, they, you know, where all those kids were, were crushed. And, oh, Travis Scott. Oh, yeah, right, right. Travis, right. Travis Scott. Okay, so similar kind of situation where it was like a, a ritual. Like they set up a ritual to take place um, and it was all part of the ritual. So they have the music, so they have the band who's playing the music and singing over it all, uh, saying the words while while they're actually doing the sacrifice. So I don't know if, were there any, uh, were there any deaths during this event? I, I don't know if there were. I but, think there were 33. Oh, was it really? I think I did hear that number. I think that's, yeah. Oh, but, wow. Yeah. Maybe their injuries or deaths or oh, both. Yeah. I don't know. Or is this the Russian thing? Yeah, I think it was yeah. 115 is what I heard earlier today. Really? Oh, really? oh wow. I didn't realize which, it was that Which way. is another fun number. 115 is a good number. Now it so. says 137, which is also an interesting um, number. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's even better. But okay. that relates to, uh, you know, 37 and 73 yeah. relate to Christ. Mary Mary Cat's backing me up with 115 in the chat. So, And there's also 133, like you, similar to what you mentioned there, Oriana. Molly, Oriana. I'm on live. <laughs> I'm live, Mom. <laughs> Look, Mom, no hands. Um, so, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway... So yeah, so wow, so very interesting there. What what's going on with all that? And then we've got Bond, James Bond, shaken, not stirred. So, um, uh, what does this guy have to do with anything? Well, um, kind of an intriguing thing with this 007. What's the real meaning behind this number? Da 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 da. And what does it have to do with this guy? Um. Tubal Cain from the Bible. And what does he have to do with the free to the mate to the sons? Mm, the plot doesn't And I see thicker. a hexagon. Hoo-hoo. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. That, that's a hexagon right there. You've got the hex. <gasps> Whoa. And we know hex means six. And there's 
666 hex 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 i did a whole video on 666 go check oh, it out yeah. i talk about hex really deeply in that one um and they they have i think they're also like they use the beehive oh the beehive symbology. that's right and the beehive uses the hexagon yep they use the hexagon mm -hmm. as as the structure for the honey and i think yeah. the blockchains are that they're coming up with are hexagon shaped too yeah, it's oh, like a Oh, the plot thing. does indeed thicken. Woohoo, man! I I had an article here about the about the bees too, not the bees. Yes, the bees. Okay, <laughs> wait, where is it? Uh, oh, it's over here. So here's the here's the bees, and this is on an actual May to the Song website. It's called well, you can see it there, but uh, uh, I don't want to say too. I've I've already said too much. Um, but uh, but there's the beehives and they use the hexagons and it's right over Tubal Cain. Now I understand why they put bees there. I'm like, why do they put bees there? Wow, this is deep, guys. This goes deeper than we can even fathom. Oh wow, okay. Oh, yeah, and was it, remember how we were looking at the the Michael Jackson album cover and the, and I was like, what are the bees on there for? Well, now it's all coming together. Ah, the bees on the Michael Jackson album cover. We still have. We still have that to explore. <laughs> okay, wow. Well, that, that, uh, that, that was yeah. the that was the last album cover we were looking at. But anyway, um, yeah. wow. So Tubal Cain. So real quick, who is this guy, and what does he have to do with 007? Uh, so D's 007 Tubal Cain and the rune of the original language. Well, I'm not going to go too deep on this whole article because that would take too much time. But as you can see, look at this. This, this looks like a 007 here. You see that image right there? Blow that up a little bit. Okay, so this is this is 007 as you can see, but it's also two bouquet. Uh, and it also looks like Harry Potter glasses. <gasps> what? With You're right. Magic <laughs> or where's Waldo? Sure. Or one of those? Yeah, that's yep. right. Man, that could look like a lot of things, or, or Wally the robot, or something. I mean, there's a lot in there. But anyway, it's a 007, okay? And that's the cane, right? And the two balls. Now, I know I, I didn't make this up, okay? I'm just reporting it. I'm just a reporter. So I know it sounds ridiculous, but that's actually what it is. It's the two balls and the cane. And Don't I, shoot the I messenger. Don't, please. <laughs> please. Okay, so two ball cane. Uh, again, I won't go too deep into him, but he what, he's, he's in the Bible. He's in Genesis. And... Uh, he is actually the, se I counted seventh from Adam, but others count eight. But uh, let me go back and look at it again. But uh, uh, in any case, Tubal Cain, he, he's like restoring Cain, the, the legend of Cain here. Um, but uh, what does this say? Tubal Cain, the father of Smithcraft. Okay, so this is on a, another free to the May to the Sown website. Okay. And they see this guy. As the father, because they they worship the the guys, or revere, I'll say, the uh, the the architects in the Bible, right? The may the may to the stones, you know, when they talk about, you know, uh, a stone may to the stone or a metal may to the stone. So so they they uh, you know are are big into these guys. Okay, so Hiram, for example, was the one who helped Solomon build the temple, and they love that guy, and they feel like this guy preceded him. So this is like the originator to them, okay? So Tubal Cain. Okay, so if we go in the Bible, uh, here it says, and the third brother, Tubal Cain, found smithcraft of gold, silver, copper, iron, and steel. And this is written by one, Mr. Mackie, one of the guys who founded uh, the whole Free to the Mace to the Song. Okay, so, whew, man. So go in and hear it in the Bible real quick, just to kind of get a little scripture to go with this. Okay, so it says... Let's look at the view. Let's view the context here. So actually, let's look at the whole chapter. So, okay. Okay. So we got Cain and Abel, right? So Cain leaves. He gets married. Well, I don't know if he got married, but he, well, it does say he laid with his wife. So I suppose. Okay. So he laid with his wife. Cain laid with his wife and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Okay. So that's one generation. Then Cain was building a city. He named it after his son Enoch. To Enoch was born Irad. That's two. Then the father of Mahujael. That's three. Mahujel is the father of Methushel, that's four. And Methushel is the father of Lamech, that's five. And then Lamech marries two women, one named Ada and another Zillah. Ada gave birth to Jabel. He was the father of those who live in tents and raise livestock. His brother's name was Jubal. 
He was the father of all who play the harp and flute. Zilla also had a son, Tubal Cain. So that would be six. So six from Cain, which you think about the number of men, the six sided, the hexagon right. we're just talking about, <laughs> six, 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 all the six references, right? Um, grandson, great, great, great exactly. son, great, great. Sorry, guys, it's somewhere in that great, great grandson area. Yeah. So six, 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 six from Cain, right? Um, that's what we just counted there. So seventh from Adam, but six from Cain, it would seem, but based on what I'm reading right here in the Bible. Um, so that's how they're looking at this guy. Okay, so he's six from Cain. Now Tubal Cain. Now the name Tubal Cain actually means it means thou will be brought of Cain. So it's kind of hearkening back to Cain, which is of course is the the shamed brother of Abel, uh, who killed his brother Abel, son of Lamech by his wife Zillah. Uh, apparently, from this, an Antiluvian patriarch and the first worker in metal. So he's the first guy to work in metal, and this is why the the mate to the stones love this guy, okay? And they sort of uh, worship him. In fact, one of their levels is has the symbol of two ball cane, which literally is a cane with two balls stuck to the next of it. I know. I didn't make it up. It's right there. Uh, but that's what it is. And uh and so that's that's one of the levels of the of the mate to the songs, okay? It's this two ball cane level. So there's a lot of connections here. Obviously there's phallic connections here and and snake connections and other things there as well. They also connect it to uh the 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 eight kings that he's seventh of the eighth because he's the seventh from Adam, but they say he's the eighth. So I don't know how he would be the eighth. I guess if you count Adam himself. But I guess so, right? Yeah, because Cain would be seven. Because he's six from Cain, so it's Cain would be seven, and Adam would be eight. So I guess they're saying that he is that king to rise up from, you know, in uh, uh, Revelation 17 that talks about the beast was that is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven, he goeth to per- into perdition, right? And then, uh, you know, the two ball Cain reference and so forth. So yes, it's literally two balls and a cane. I know that sounds ridiculous, but I didn't make it up. Okay, so... So there you go. I don't know why I just started thinking about Aaron's staff. Uh, yeah, Aaron's staff. But uh, there's also in Baal English. in there. Uh, you know, yeah. two, Baal, two is you in Spanish <laughs> right. or Latin. So you, Baal and Cain, Baal and Cain, you know, maybe the false god and then the false or the, the betraying brother. Um, oof. There's a lot in there. Mary Cat just put in the chat too. Same with yoga. She said those symbols are in yoga and the two ball cane also. Wow, mm, really? Yeah. That's interesting. And you can actually buy one of these canes. This is the cane that they sell again on another official Made to the Sewn website. Um, and they sell the cane that is shaped like the two ball cane there. So it's sort of an inside joke that they make there, the cane and the two balls there. So uh, there you go. And apparently, he was the first uh, polygamy, or they want to say polyamory, but polygamy, poly- polygamist in the Bible as well. Um, if we go back there to Genesis 4 for a second. Uh, where is it, Genesis 4? It says, uh, Lamech married two women. Well, it seems like Lamech would be the first one. I don't know what they mean, but, but is that what they're saying? Yeah, because Lamech married two women, one named Adanzilla, two about Cain. Lamech said to his wife, Adanzilla. Yeah, I guess he's the offspring of the first polygamist marriage, I guess you could say, or something something of that nature. You know, a lot of times they say married, but, you know, our terms of married might be different than theirs. But, uh, uh, yeah, so that's kind of intriguing as well. Any other thoughts on Mr. Tubal Cain? Yeah, Lamech, he ends up being the first person in the Bible to marry more than one wife. So there you go. And he was the offspring of that. Well, and uh, Mikhail, and uh, later on, this is in the antediluvian world, pre flood things. Mm-hmm. In Ezekiel, it talks about the priest of Meshach and Tubal. And it talks mm-hmm. about it in other places too. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And whether they're talking about a place 
in an area, I don't know. Yeah. But it's well, that's a good somehow point. Maybe that's a those, good point. Yeah. Maybe those bloodlines made it through the flood. Because I don't, I don't know. Yeah. So there's Tubal Cain, and then there's Tubal that we have in Genesis as well, the sons of Japheth. Tubal was the son of Japheth, but then we also have. Tubal shows up in Ezekiel 38, the infamous prophecy 38 and 39 that we're waiting to be fulfilled, uh, the chief priest of Meshach and Tubal. So it appears that we're talking about two different guys. However, there may be some sort of connection there. Um, from and what what I would offer up is to say it was uh, like the sorcery or something, the, the magic, something like that that made it through the flood that the creator was trying to wipe out with the flood mm-hmm. and somehow, or maybe the monuments were built and these men came and found those monuments and started to worship those Nephilim or men of old kings mm-hmm. of renown, mm-hmm. which was, or maybe that's where, I don't know. It's confusing. Yeah. I mean, we know Tubal came from the line of Seth. Uh, because he came from Noah. Noah came from Seth, and, and then Noah had his three sons, and Japheth was the th- third son. So he was also named Tubal, his son. So there's a little bit of an interesting connection. It's kind of like the two different Tubals. There's Tubal and Tubal Cain, like the good Tubal perhaps and the bad Tubal or, or what have you. But then, but then these Tubals are not so good either because they're coming against Israel. So it's interesting. Don't want to be named Tubal, I guess. Um, okay, so... Carrying on from there. So we've got 007, right? The two balls and the cane. Now what's interesting, because uh, this cane is shaped like the seven, and then the two balls next to it. And then you've got the interesting uh, colors are the yellow, the blue, the kind of the gold and the blue. And it's the same color that he uses kind of on the show, the blue with the gold sort of flame in there. Um and, you know, again, hearkening back to uh, 007 as well, you know, the two balls and the cane, right? And just, just that whole connection that they're making and perhaps this whole idea of, uh, I don't know, being a mate to the son, a smith of some kind, uh, licensed to K-I to the L-L. So, I don't know. Interesting. Interesting to, to consider. But this guy supposedly was a mate to the son. I don't know much about him. But, uh, I mean, I know of him, but I just don't know about the May to the Sun connection too much. But um, Mr. Pat of the Robert of the Sun is the founder and leader of the most powerful grassroots movement in America. So, in other words, a lot of these Christian organizations could actually be fronts for May to the Suns, is what seems to be implied here. Um, I but, mean, basically, I'm like, if you have any type of entertainment media connection on a high level you probably are there's a good chance yeah there's a good chance um unless you're completely independent i suppose which includes the christian broadcasting network the family channel etc etc i'm sure you guys are familiar with this guy and and those channels but uh uh there you go so there might be some connection there with his whole 700 club why is it called 700 clubs kind of an odd name i'm sure he has reasons that sound spiritual but are there other reasons that are hidden in plain sight? Something to consider there. So don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Um, you know, I just thought that, uh, it was interesting um, thinking about this whole uh, satanic connection. Uh, just kind of maybe on an encouraging note. Uh, mm-hmm. As above, so below, you know, the, the, the devil's famously pointing up and pointing down at the same time. We see this in Forrest Gump when he's pointing up and pointing down at the same time. And there's other movies and other things that echo that. So um, so anyway, w- let's see. In Western, uh, it, they don't really know why. So, I mean, you know, there's lots of ways we could say. But it says, left-hand and right-hand path are two opposing approaches to, to magic. This terminology is used by various groups involved in the occult and ceremonial magic. And some definitions, the left-hand path is equated with malicious black magic, while the right-hand path is equated in benevolent with benevolent white magic. There's no such thing, guys. It's all from the devil, okay? Other occultists have criticized this definition, believing that the left-right dichotomy refers merely to different kinds of working. It does not necessarily connote good or bad, because it's all bad. 
Uh, other practitioners state the difference between the two is that the desired outcome of the right is to be beside God and to serve him, while the left is to believe in self-deification and bow to no one. More recent definitions are based on the Indian use of the terms in Tantra, the right-hand path, is seen as a definition of those magical groups that follow specific ethical codes and adapt social convention while the left-hand path adopts the opposite attitude, espousing the breaking of taboo and the abandoning of set morality. Some contemporary occultists, such as this guy, have stressed that both paths can be followed by a magical practitioner. It's all bad. I mean, don't don't let anybody fool you with that nonsense. But uh, right-hand path is commonly thought to refer to magical religions. Okay, they divide the concepts. Um, I mean, there's lots of things you can imply as above, so below, you know, that's, that's biblical. Um, don't let the left hand know what the right hand's doing. Jesus says that, um, it could also imply Satan fell from above and he, he's going, he's going to wind up in hell. You know, there's, there's lots of things you could, uh, get out of that. But, uh, just thought that was kind of intriguing because I also came across this, um, I shouldn't say I came across, this was shown to me, but by the way, I want to thank Oriana and Louie and Tandra and others who, help contribute to tonight's uh, uh, discussion with all these topics. So you guys are do such a great job researching uh, throughout the week and, and send me these things. So thank you so much for that. Um, but in this video, this is an ex witch um, who says that they used to specifically try to attack Christians. Um, and they, she would see a, when, when she would try to attack Christians who were praying she would like a group say that was praying. Maybe they're in a church or something. She would see a blue dome over them, protecting them. And she said there was no way that she could attack the Christians when she tried uh, to attack them. Groups of Christians that were praying or just through the, all those experiences, I connected that we could not attack Christians. Okay. So there you go, guys. You cannot attack Christians. Uh, this is kind of an just encouraging thing I wanted to share with you guys that if you're if you're if you are with the Lord and rely on the Lord and giving your life over to God, Satan can have no power over you. The Bible says, "Resist the devil, and he will flee from you." Okay, so the devil has no power over, over you other than what you give to him, and if and only if you invite him in will he come into your life, and he will if you invite him in, and then you got to get God to drive him out. But uh, but as long as you are are you know leaving your life of sin, leaving, you know, dying to the world and turning to the Lord, he will protect you. And uh, here's a ex witch saying they, they had no way that they could not attack the Christians because they were being protected under God's umbrella, so to speak. That was her experience. You know, take it for what you, what you will. But it is biblical to say that you can resist the devil and he will flee. As from they you. were actively praying. Says they're actively praying. So it's just another reminder you want to keep praying. Uh, the Bible says pray continually. Maybe that's why we need to pray continually because we're always under attack from the devil. So let us always be praying to the Lord. And sometimes we can take that for granted. We can say, well, I said a prayer this morning or I prayed when I had my meal today. But to pray continually, you know, that should be something that we're always thinking and always praying to the Lord. Any thoughts on any of this? Um, back to the Harry Potter thing. Yeah. So God put it on my spirit, I want to say a few months ago. Maybe mm -hmm. longer. I lose track of time. I'm so sorry. Um, but the thing about him having a scar above his, like on his forehead, mm -hmm. that's lightning. Mm -hmm. I was like, that again ties into like, don't believe that some of it's good. It's all bad. Right. That's, that's really right. actually them saying yeah, Satan the because good we know good Satan felt like lightning. That. That's right. And also the Antichrist will have a deadly head wound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, witchcraft is a sin, guys. You'll go to hell for that. So you don't want to keep practicing that stuff. The Bible says it very clearly. Do not practice witchcraft. Uh, those who continue to live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. So you don't you don't want to be in that club. But uh, yeah, good point. Good point about that. Um, and um, you made me think of something else here. Oh, I know. I wanted to share. So I want to do a time and date thing here with you real quick. Let's see. Time and date. Um, so everybody's doing countdowns these days, you know, it's like everybody should go. There's a countdown, like they're all counting down to something. Okay. Um, so the time of day calculator. Okay. So we know that the first eclipse was on August 17th, right? Which would be eight, August 17th. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Is that right? No, August 21st, 2017. Is that what it was? Anyone? Bueller? Um, am I, am I right about that? Anybody? So I'm just going from memory here. 
The last. I big, can't remember. The last big eclipse. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, uh, yeah. Can Mary Cat said the 21st or the 23rd of August. Yeah, I think it's the 20. I'm pretty sure it's 21st. Um, so. Let's just do it. Okay. Uh, eclipse. 2017 was well, the 21st. Yes. Okay. So August 21st, right to April 8th, 2024. Now that was basically six years, six months, six weeks, and six days or something like that. Um, it's six years, seven months, 18 days. But if you break that out, 18 is six, six, six. And then I guess you can do it's six years, six months. And if you combine this, I guess you get, can get like roughly six, six weeks, six days, something like that. Um, but what's the date in between these dates? Okay. So 24, 20, 22, right. Is how many days we're talking about here. Right. We see that. Okay. So 24, 22 divided in half. That's 12, 11. Is that right? Okay. So if I take 12, 11 to this and calculate this date, we come to December 14th of 2020. Okay. Now this is the exact middle date between these two epic American eclipses, right? Where we get the X marks the spot. And of course we had the other one, uh, the other eclipse, but can you believe that there was an eclipse on this day as well on December 14th? And that's not all that happened. December 14th, uh, of what year was that? 2020. There was an eclipse that day. Okay. This is kind of, I mean, this kind of stuff is kind of shows you how important, you know, signs in the heavens are because they always match up in an amazing way. Okay. So, so the smack middle date between both of these major American eclipses was this December 14th eclipse, which was also technically American soil, South America, but technically we're connected. Um, but it was a solar eclipse of December 14th, 2020. Okay. And Let's see. It, it too is a total solar eclipse. So three total solar eclipse. You got total solar eclipse, total solar eclipse. The smack middle date is a total solar eclipse. That's kind of astronomical, just that alone. But when you look at what else happened on that day, it's also very intriguing. So on that date, on December 14th of 2020, um, and what did I have open here? This looks like something else. Hmm. Um, where is it? Where was I? Over here. It's the same day that they decided this guy, instead of the guy who actually won, uh, should be in the in the office, right? So that happened on the exact same day, December 14th, 2020. So it's like, talk about bad omens, right? So that happened the same day that that fateful event took place. Um, and then... Also on that date, we had, um, was when another evil, wicked, horrible thing happened, is when the U.S. administered the first of the poison uh, on that same date as well, December 14th of 2020. So that's pretty significant, I think, now that we're looking at this being all wrapped up here and tied with a bow with this final eclipse. Uh, here on the 8th. Um, some seriously bad stuff going on there. Any thoughts about that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah? I disagree. <laughs> I was just agreeing. Yeah. Just agreeing. Seriously I mean, bad stuff. That's pretty, pretty yeah. outstanding, I think, that all those events are lining up that way, I would say. Yeah. Um, and then last couple thoughts here, and that is um, on... You may know you know may know about this uh, documentary that came out recently. Um, whoops, clicked the wrong thing. Um, uh, so basically, if you translate the word Nickelodeon, it means I don't care about God. Um, let me see if I go over to a translator here. I kind of want to try it. Don't you want me want to try it? Nickel. How, how do they say it? Of course we do. Right, it's fun. It's funner. Okay, Nick Galodio. I don't care about God. That was if you throw an N in there. That no, doesn't mean. 
N could just be N could be completing sort of the uh, the chiasmus there because it starts with an N and it ends with an N, so kind of intriguing. Uh, but anyway, as you know, all this stuff's coming out about them being wicked, so um, so it kind of st- stands to reason that they wouldn't care about God. And then last but not least, and please do subscribe if you haven't subscribed already, both here and also at uh, at at 100% Bible Mikhail Ministries. And uh, also Mikhail Messenger. Thank you so much for your support. We need your support here. We need you. We need you. Would you help us out? Thank you so much. Um, and because uh, they'll, they'll, you know, they're just removing people right and left. Okay. So anyway, uh, this is just kind of a fun thing. We did it last time. So so we're, this is our next fun one. Uh, we talked about Michael Jackson's album cover. And we may uh, continue this discussion here in the fellowship. So if you haven't come over to the fellowship yet, what are you waiting for? Come over and join us. Uh, just go to MikhailMinistries.com, the link right on the screen, and you can come join us for the discussion. Uh, but uh, but basically, last time we talked about Michael Jackson's other album cover and all the interesting things in there. So maybe we'll just save that for our after video discussion. So if you want to get, if you want to know what we talk about in this in this image right here, woohoo! You're gonna want to come over right now. Come over right now. You don't want to miss it. So come over and join the discussion with us, and we'd love to have you with us, guys. This has been a great time hanging out tonight, and. Uh, Woo, man, so much fun stuff to cover. I love it. It's such a blast. So, uh, man, a lot to look forward to, guys. I mean, today is Purim. Tomorrow's Shushan Purim. We've got the eclipse still tonight that's happening and the lunar eclipse. And two weeks from now, we've got the, of course, epic eclipse we've all been waiting for. Guys, a lot to a lot to get excited about. Now's the time you want to get close to the Lord. Now's the time you want to repent. Leave that life of sin. If you haven't already, boy, what, 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 what's going on? What's going on? You can't continue to live like that and expect to go to heaven. So you got to leave that life. Galatians 5. Uh, you can't keep living that way. Um, you got to turn around. And, and we help people turn their life around here. So come on over to the fellowship. We can help you with that. You can come talk to me personally about uh, living, living the life of a true Christian, a disciple of Christ. And I'd love to help you with that. So uh, come join us. Macau Ministries is free. Uh, you just fill out to get in just like you would on YouTube so that you can you know, it's, it's function here on this server so that we can do all the interactive stuff that we do here. So come join us and uh, we look forward to seeing you here for the conversation. Guys, love you and uh, wishing you all the best and all the blessed and Maranatha.